Good morning, YouTubers. It's, uh, what day is today? It's Monday, April, not April. We're into May. Ever since uh, 2019, ever since a certain secret knowledge conference, it was called May 20th, it is, back in uh, November of 2018, I did some videos about that. It kind of kicked off a habit or a new practice of doing a lot of videos because I have that time now. It's not the best equipment. It's not the best studio I could imagine, but it's pretty good for me, and so I'm taking advantage of this time that I have because I can envision easily what if my Truckers for Peace were to catch on and people invited me. I'm not a truck driver, by the way, but I have this program long in the making where we trade routes around the world. Now, that's just the broader theme. The details are difficult. You don't speak the language. They drive on the other side of the road. Maybe you don't go there right away. But, you know, we did see this phenomenon anyway, and we're, we're seeing truckers in North America wanting to drive in the Middle East. There are a lot of them in Iraq, convoys of 18-wheelers, so on. So it's not like what I'm asking is crazy. It's just, does it have to be done as a military program? I'm more like trained in the State Department way of doing things. Didn't work for the State Department. I'm just saying I watch people. I hung out around them like embassy types as a kid, just as a kid. Uh, growing up, right, in the Philippines and stuff. So what's on my screen, what I'm going to talk about here is you've seen all my videos. I haven't promoted them much. I just say, hey, here, here's some stuff on Facebook. And then I plop them down on my blogs, but I haven't done a great job yet, and I mean ever, but I hope to, really organizing them so you can see, you know, oh, because he talked about this topic already five times so why don't we put those together like these videos I'm doing can easily be reshuffled a lot of them are on the same themes I keep the, the themes pretty tightly focused it's kind of jumping around between Python and its ecosystem which includes these days pandas numpy Jupyter notebooks Jupyter labs so I'm in that space, machine learning happens here, scikit-learn, great training ground, TensorFlow, PyTorch. I don't have videos on those because I'm not really competing right now with uh, professional machine learning teachers. They're doing a good job. Uh, I'll teach it professionally, but I won't do the YouTubes about it because I'm not really advertising that as my niche. My niche is I phase in the Bucky Fuller geometry called synergetics, which is also a philosophy. It's in the humanities. And clearly, it's got a simple volumes table like 1, 3, 4, 6, 20, 18. We haven't sorted the column on volume yet. So the icosahedron, even though it's a little smaller, and you say, well, what icosahedron am I talking about? These all have to have specific edge links to come out with these nice ratios, volume ratios. And I'm saying, yeah, you're thinking correctly there. So this is not as known as ABCD, right? It's like we don't have this in elementary school. In fact, polyhedrons are always in the back of a book in geometry, even in 10th grade in my experience. We don't get there with the teacher. It's all plain geometry. And that's it for a lot of us. We're never going to come back to geometry, really. Maybe if we get into CAD, so we go to architecture school and we start over, Chemistry, going to have some polyhedrons. Crystallography, definitely. So Arthur Loeb is a crystallographer. And if you go back and see other YouTubes, I pick up the crystallography thread here and there. So the anthropology question is, because you see I write a lot about path versus stem. And by path, I mean philosophy, anthropology, theater, and history. And by stem, I mean science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. There's a lot of agreement on what STEM means, and then they stick an A in to say STEAM, which seems pretty clever, but then they say that means art, and I say anthropology, because anthropology includes art, and over here on the left, that A is also anthropology, so then I can intersect the two, I can scrabble, kind of clever. But what I'm leading up to is anthropology. 
I think why did this simple volumes table and all of this useful architecture like here's a geodesic dome mosque in the Ohio why is this stuff not taught not even at the university level like I can understand elementary school is the most conservative institution on the planet because it's parents right and they're nervous if it's information they didn't learn then in, and their kids are learning it that like creates kind of a generation gap of some kind and that can't be allowed of course when you think about it of course the only reason civilization continues to adapt to the world is because the kids are not carbon copies so that can't really be the problem but nevertheless we usually do pass the torch and here the torch we've chosen not to pass it by we I don't mean me because we those other me's really don't think this is important at all or you would have heard about it right and so that's one reason to tune it out is like blah blah he thinks this is important but I've never seen it before so it can't be see that kind of stuff so why isn't this taught and I'm saying that's going to be anthropology for a lot of years to come we're going to be going back over this time in history kind of fine tooth combing so think of that you know what where were you you know in this picture what was your role now that sounds very kind of like I'm trying to spread some kind of gospel or something it sounds like a trick that a missionary might use and in fact that's what the smear on Bucky was a lot of the time he has disciples right and that's a bad thing because that means he thinks he's a messiah and that's a bad thing. So lots of bad things you can say about Bucky. And a lot of them are in print, have been said. You know, he had this crush on this girl once and, you know, all this stuff, you know, gossip. And that goes with the territory. So I wouldn't suppress that or say that any of that's not true even. It's just still every thinker in the world has their personal story and then they contribute whatever. And I'm saying, wow, look at the amount of inertia that must be behind keeping the lid on this like why why you know so simple and that kind of stuff so those are my anthropological questions and I would encourage you if you're into doing research you're on the internet you you're in whatever time you are in the future from now obviously um, check it out do some research yourself and see if if I'm still around let me know, like I'm interested. Um, David Kosky's working on the same thing. He's driving cross country. We just talked on the phone. He visited the Zone Tool people. That's really cool. And there's some artists and other people who are very fluent with this stuff already, or seem to be. But, you know, it's still a question. Why is it so embedded in the culture and yet kept out of your curriculum? You know, you, the paying public school taxpayer type aren't being told about one of the great American geniuses of the 20th century and the simplifications and streamlining that occurred in the pedagogy around polyhedrons no no no, no you can't know that don't go look at all the YouTubes up till 2019 and see how many how many take this up aside from mine subtract mine and then see and so, wow, there must have been a really, really strong iron fist keeping this stuff down. So, look, where, where is it? So that's anthropology. That's something to study. I'm inviting uh, PhD theses, uh, books, movies, interesting, I think. Now, that's just me, duh. So, anyway, that's my fun video for today rambling as usual. I hope you have a good afternoon when we get to it and rest of your day.